And uh, Franklin, can you? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is CET236, and it says superposition, but we sort of did superposition last week. I'm going to reprise that, and we'll also talk about some other stuff. So let's uh, have a look. I did have the um, midterm one in this list here. Um, but we're not going to do the midterm during this class session. Um, as you should be aware, you should book your midterm session through the link of the accessible item in Blackboard. Um, just to remind you, right, under assessment, and there's the midterm, there's a link here, which should take you to this page which should give you some um, available slots for um, various days. Some days have more slots than others, so uh, choose wisely. Okay, um, let's go back to OneNote. <clears throat> And that's where we are. We've just about done with all the stuff that I need to talk about for resistors only. Once we're done with that, I'm going to change gears and we're going to move on to uh, circuits with inductances and capacitances. Um, and so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, that's where we are. It looks like we've got uh, homework five and lab five due today or tonight, 11.59 p.m. So uh, please uh, have a look at that. And please get the midterm done before April 1st. Um, that's the midterm. I had... Uh, 16 people already book their midterm session. It might be more. I, may, I think I may have seen another booking come in uh, since I made this slide. So um, thank you for that. Um, nobody's taken it yet, so uh, we'll, we'll have to see how we go. Um, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll update this slide each week over the next couple of weeks until we... Uh, we get everybody done. Now, I did have a question um, in email um, about question nine here. So let's just have a, I thought it might be good to just have a quick look at uh, what question nine is saying. So question nine. Right. A resistor has a resistance of R1 at temperature T1 and a resistance of R2 at temperature T2. What is the nominal resistance? What is the value of alpha? Now this question is sort of asked the wrong way round. Right. Let me just... Uh, take a, a picture of that and let's go over into OneNote. Uh, where are we going? It's up here somewhere. There we are. Right, so normally when you're asked this sort of a question, the uh, you're given the nominal resistance and you're given the material, and you're asked to find the resistance at a, a different temperature from the standard temperature, which is usually 21 degrees Celsius. Right, so this one 
it's a little different because um, we're given the two temperatures and the two resistances at the two temperatures. So th let's just have a look. So the you should know that the resistance at a given temperature is the nominal resistance times one plus alpha times T minus the nominal temperature. Okay? And what this question is saying is the following. It's saying we have um, R1 equals R nom times 1 plus alpha times T1 minus T nom. And we have R2 equals R nom times 1 plus alpha times T2 minus T nom. Where the unknown things now are the alpha and the nominal resistance. Okay, so we've got two equations in two unknowns. It's a little different because um, we we the the equations are not linear, right? If I if I multiplied this out, I'd have a term with R nom times alpha, which we usually don't get in the the example questions we've seen so far with uh, KVL and KCL linear linear systems but we can still think about solving the problem by one of the standard techniques of that we've we've looked at before and the technique I'm thinking about is substitution Right. What we can do is we can, let's call this equation 1 and let's call this equation 2. Right. We can take equation 1 and we can rewrite it in the following way. We can say R nom is equal to R1 divided by 1 plus alpha times T1 minus T nom. Okay? So now I can substitute that into equation 2, call that equation 3. Then I can substitute 3 into 2. Okay, then I can say R2 equals R1 on 1 plus alpha times T1 minus T nom times uh, 1 plus alpha times T2 minus T nom. Okay, and then um, you might need to rearrange it a bit more. Now we can multiply both sides by 1 plus alpha T1 times T nom, and we get R2 times 1 plus alpha times T1 minus T nom equals R1 times 1 plus alpha times T2 minus T nom. Right? Now, I've stated the question in general terms, but the aim for when you solve this numerically is 
you've got a value for R2, you've got a value for R T1, you've got a value for T nom, you've got a value for R1, you've got a value for T2, you've got a value for T nom. So the only unknown in this equation is is alpha. Right. So you should be able to multiply this out once you've given the values of R1, R2, T1 and T2. You should know T norm is 21 degrees Celsius. Um, and then you can solve for alpha. Once you've solved for alpha, you can then uh, substitute that value for alpha back into equation three and that'll give you the nominal resistance. Okay. So that that was just a. Somebody asked me about question nine. It was. Um, it is a bit of a different question from the others in that section. It's using exactly the same formulae, right? The the formula is exactly the same, but uh, it's giving you giving you different numbers or different. Um, elements of the uh, of the equation and it, it it's not necessarily straightforward about as to how you uh, how you answer it any other questions about the midterm Okay, we'll move on. So today I want to, uh, maybe not in this order, um, but I want to do, talk about superposition again. I'll just reiterate, go over the uh, um, examples again, or the, the, the slides again. I want to talk about, uh, well, we, we want to apply superposition in the tutorial three questions. And the two new topics that I want to talk about today are maximum power transfer and the Thevenin and, I want to start on Thevenin and Norton. Um, may not be able to finish Thevenin and Norton today, but uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. And I'm open to any questions about the homework that's due today and uh, the lab six, I'll uh, do a quick read through of that and uh, see if there's anything um, anybody has any questions about for that. Okay, we good so far? Okay, so let's have a look at superposition again. And I've already gone through these slides last time, so um, it shouldn't be too much. Um, but let's let's start at the top, right? So superposition is another algorithm. We've talked about the mesh analysis as one algorithm. Nodal analysis is another algorithm. This algorithm doesn't solve for currents and voltages directly like those other two algorithms do, but it gives us a way to simplify um, circuits so that uh, we can um, uh, solve more complicated circuits. And the, the algorithm is you first of all find each independent supply in the circuit and these are the ones that are in green on the top of the screen now the the voltage supply or the battery type or the current version and these are the ones in in circles or the the plate version for the battery um, that is you cannot use dependent supplies, the ones in diamonds on the right in red. Right? And then we replace all 
other independent sources. So we've, if we've got multiple uh, independent sources, we select one of them and then we replace all the others with an ideal source. And I think we talked about what an ideal source is. An ideal source is taking, whether it's a current source or a voltage source, and um, setting its voltage or its current to zero. And in the case of a voltage source, if you set the voltage source's voltage to zero, then effectively you turn it into a wire or a short circuit. And if you set a current source's current to zero, then you make it an open circuit. Okay, that should be. Um, so what that means is when you find these other supplies in the circuit, you replace all the voltage supplies with a short circuit and you replace all the current supplies with an open circuit. And then you just solve that circuit, that modified circuit, um, for whatever value you needed to solve in the original circuit. And you get a value. It's not the answer, it's a part of the answer for the final value. And then you go back and you select another independent source and do the same thing. And so on for each independent source in the circuit. And you'll get an answer if you've got three independent sources in the circuit, you'll get three answers for the whatever the, the quantity is that you've been asked to solve for. And all you need to do is add up those three values and that will give you the value for the original circuit. And I, I think I talked about how linearity is, is related to superposition. And this is a, 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 a property of linearity of the system. This doesn't always apply if the system is not linear, but everything in this course um, has a, is a linear system. Except maybe some of the transient stuff we're going to do towards the end, but uh, everything else is... Uh, is linear. And then I will work through this quick example, right? We've got two voltage sources and the aim is to uh, replace each voltage source with a short circuit, solve for I out and sum the answers at the end. So if we do that, first of all, we we'll replace VS1 and get an answer then we replace VS2 and get an answer for I out. And then the total at the end is the sum of those two answers for the original circuit. Current sources are a bit different. When we replace a current source, we replace it with an open circuit. So what that means is um, you end up with something like that sometimes. And that means nothing is happening with R3, right? So really that's the circuit you're analyzing. So you've got to be careful that uh, you don't uh, infer that there's some current through R3. The trouble with R3 in this example is that there's, there's nowhere for this, the, the current to go, okay? And that ends up with uh, summing the two values, right? So there's, there's not much to superposition. Um, I think the, the, the trick is to make sure that you, uh, uh, it does actually simplify things. Just a, a note, um, most of the questions I'm going to ask you to solve using superposition can be solved using other techniques. They can be solved using mesh analysis or nodal analysis. However, I want you to solve it. If I ask you explicitly to solve it using superposition, I want you to solve it using superposition. 
you know, the aim is for you to show me that um, you understand superposition, not necessarily um, that you can solve the circuit. Um, later in the course, on the final, um, I will give you circuits and I won't give you, I won't ask you to solve the circuit in a particular way. Part of what I want you to get out of this course is uh, familiarity with several of these techniques and then the ability to choose which technique you're going to apply. And some people have more of an affinity for mesh analysis. And so just like when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, um, everybody uh, that, that per people who prefer mesh analysis will apply mesh analysis every time. And if they're competent at it, that is perfectly okay. Similarly, some people prefer nodal analysis and um, they will apply nodal analysis regardless of whether it's simpler to use mesh analysis or not. And that is okay, provided they show their competence at solving using nodal analysis. Um, it usually not possible to solve some of the later circuits we have using uh, voltage dividers and current dividers. But I have had the occasional person do that on the final and they get the right answer, that is okay. Um, okay, uh, any questions so far about superposition? Lots of quiet, that's okay. Uh, professor? Yeah, what's up? Um, I don't think you shared today's lecture, just letting you know on for the YouTube video. Oh, I didn't, sorry. Uh, yes, you're probably right. Let me do that now. Um, I should have got a... Sorry about that. There we go. So where are we? We are in the uh, materials and today's lecture. So that should be going up now. Thank you for uh, letting me know. Okay. Um, so that was superposition. And let's just have a, I, I won't do the tutorial yet. There's only, there's only two uh, superposition questions here, but let's, let's just have a quick look at the sort of question we might get. All right, so it's the same sort of circuit that we uh, get with uh, mesh analysis or nodal analysis, right? Um, but it's, uh, the question is asking to solve using superposition and there's a current source and there's a voltage source and that's pretty much the same circuit just uh, some of the values changed right in fact I thought it might be good to see if we could see if there's anything uh, so page 103, let's see if we can get to page 103. This is Professor Broderick's book. Superposition. Let's just have a quick look at what um, Professor Broderick says. And as you can see, I've got, I've taken my screenshot um, from the slide directly from the book. And Let's 
So let's have a look. Oh, I think we looked at this one, right? So again, the aim is to uh, replace each battery source with a, a wire and solve it and then replace the other battery source with a wire and solve it and then get the, the answer. And now we replace IS with an open source, sorry, open circuit, then replace VS with a closed circuit with a short circuit. Okay, and then we get some slightly more complicated circuits. All right, here we've got two voltage sources and a current source. So we start with, this means we have to solve three separate problems. First of all, keeping VS1, then keeping VS2, and then finally keeping IS. And then we get a an answer out the end by summing the the three separate uh, values. So, one question about superposition is what happens with dependent supplies? Right here, we've got VS one, which is a dependent supply. And you just leave them in the circuit and keep an analyzing the circuit as if they were just part of the circuit, right? So here we've got two independent supplies, IS and VS2. And we just replace each of the independent supplies alternately. So first of all, we replace um, VS2 and solve for that, right? We can do a, a a KVL super loop around or avoiding IS, and you can see that VS1 comes in to the equation just like you would expect. And then for uh, replacing IS and keeping VS2 then we get something very similar. Right. And again, we've got uh, our KVL equation is uh, has two I out two um, in the second instance. And then we get a, the answer for the overall system by just summing the two values. I think that's about it. Okay. So right before we dive into the, the tutorial, I thought I'd, I'd skip ahead a bit and look at um, uh, I thought I'd look ahead at um, Thevenin and Norton. Okay, so um, let's let's have a look at that. Right, so this is what I had on the the slate. I've talked about superposition, and now, like I said, I want to skip ahead a bit and talk about Thevenin and Norton equivalents. And again, I, I've neglected to take out the uh, the date when I made these slides, so uh, that's okay. This hasn't changed. This hasn't changed. Most of this stuff hasn't changed since I went through, right? So that was uh, that was a while ago. So Thevenin and, and Norton's theorems are really two very very similar ideas. Um, and the idea is that if you have a circuit and 
designate one of those, one of the resistors or one of the impedances in the general sense, designate one of those impedances as a load, then you can think about what the circuit looks like from the perspective of that load. Right? And that load, all that load sees is a voltage and a current, effectively. And you could, what Thevenin's theorem says is regardless of what the rest of the circuit is doing, you can, from the perspective of the load, you can replace everything with a single voltage source and a single resistance. And the voltage source and the current sorry, the voltage source and the resistance are called the Thevenin equivalent circuit of the original. Okay? And the, the, you get a, a voltage, which is called the Thevenin voltage, and you get a resistance, which is called the Thevenin resistance. Now, <clears throat> um, um, so I was going to uh, talk about uh, maximum power, but we 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 haven't uh, we haven't covered that yet. So I'll just remember. Um, so one of the <clears throat> one of the nice things about Thevenin and, and Norton equivalent circuits is um, you can make really complicated things. Uh, simplify them uh, really quite a lot. And one of the complicated things that sometimes needs simplification is um, the, <clears throat> the way uh, the cable TV box is connected to the cable company's network, right? You could think about uh, you could think about this circuit here being all the uh, <clears throat> all the other parts of the cable company's network. Everybody else that they're connected to, their broadcast center, um, all of that sort of stuff. And one thing you can do is you can take that and treat it as if it's a simple voltage source with a, an impedance. I don't know if you've ever looked at um, the, uh, the, the cable boxes, but most of them have what's called a, a, a BNC connector, right? Um, that, that is used for coaxial cable. And I don't know if you've ever looked at coaxial cable, but oftentimes um, coaxial cable is uh, uh, labeled with an impedance. And the numbers that are us it's usually labeled with are 50 ohms or 75 ohms or sometimes 110 ohms. Right? And you can think about a, uh, a, a co coaxial cable as being something like this circuit, right? this circuit here. And what the, the impedances, it's usually only one of those three, um, what the impedance label on the coaxial cable is saying is that you can forget about the, the huge length potentially of the coaxial cable. As far as your set top box is concerned, your cable box is concerned, that coaxial cable looks like a 
75 ohm load. So it's quite a quite a powerful thing. And it's stopped. I'm going to have to quit one note again when it does that. It uh, doesn't stop. So we'll fire up one note again. Okay. So Norton's theorem, almost exactly the same thing. Norton's theorem says that you can replace the fixed circuit from the perspective of the load and now instead of a voltage source and a resistance, you can replace it with a current source and a res resistance. In the case of Thevenin, it's a voltage source and a series resistance. In the case of Norton, it's a current source and a parallel resistance. Okay. And the two are called, in the Thevenin case, the, the circuit is called a Thevenin equivalent or a Thevenin equivalent circuit. In the case of Norton, it's called a Norton equivalent or a Norton equivalent circuit. And one of the interesting things about these two, I'm going to get something you can read, is that the Norton equivalent resistance is equal to the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Okay, so the this, res, this equivalent resistor here has the same value as this equivalent resistance here even though one is has is paired with a voltage source and the other is paired with a current source. So the question is, um, how do you find it? How do you get there? And there are three techniques um, that I'm going to show you. The most uh, applicable one is the last one, the apply a voltage source. But the others are useful too. Um, and one of them, the middle one, the open circuit voltage short circuit current approach, um, really needs uh, the, the its step of finding the open circuit voltage really needs to be used across all three approaches. Okay. But these, uh, these three are, are aimed at finding the Thevenin resistance. They don't find the Thevenin voltage. So you need to, you need to find the, uh, uh, apply the open circuit voltage ideas to get the Thevenin voltage. Okay, so let's see what that is what each of them does. So the equivalent resistance approach has a limitation, which means that you, you can't have a dependent supply anywhere in the circuit. So it is a bit limited. Um, and the approach is you remove the load resistance and then you replace all of the supplies, all of the independent supplies, they have to be independent, you can't do this, apply this approach with a, uh, a dependent supply. They supplies have to be independent. So you replace all of the independent supplies with their ideal resistances. So voltage source becomes a wire and the current source becomes an open circuit. And then you find the equivalent resistance between the nodes where the load was connected. And that resistance is the Thevenin resistance. It's also the Norton resistance.
Okay, so here's an example where we took away the load which was on the, the right hand side and now we're replacing um, the voltage that was there with its equivalent ideal which is a wire and so in this instance the equivalent resistance of this circuit is R1 in parallel with R2 plus R3 because R1 is, is in parallel with R2 and that whole thing is in series with R3. Right? So R1 in parallel with R2 is going to be 1 on. Let's write it out. Right, so R1 in parallel with R2 is going to be uh, 1 on 1 third plus 1 sixth, right, which is going to be uh, 1 on 2 sixths plus 1 sixth, which is 1 on 3 sixths which is 2, right? And then R3 is just 5, so the overall thing is 7 ohms. So the open circuit voltage short circuit current approach is a little bit more general, and it does have a a little bit of a limitation in that the circuit must have one or more independent supplies. Right? And again, the first step in all of these is to remove the load resistance. So the load is removed, and then what you do is you find the open circuit voltage between the nodes where the load will be connected. Then you place a, a short across those nodes and you figure out what the short circuit current is. And the uh, Thevenin resistance is just the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. Now the, the interesting thing about this approach is that well let's let's think about it right if I have if I have a, a Thevenin equivalent right that's VTH and that's RTH and I've removed the load so the voltage I'm measuring here is the open circuit voltage. What is the open circuit voltage? Christian, any idea what the open circuit voltage is? Could be zero. Oh no! Um, um, just the current through the equivalent resistor. Well, is there any current? Remember, it's open circuit. Uh, then it would be uh, zero. I I'm not sure. I could say zero, but uh, I'm thinking many things in my head right now. But I think it would be zero. Okay. Let's see, uh, Stephen. Stephen or Wilson, do you have any idea of what the volt open circuit voltage might be in this case? Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Isn't that the voltage of the Tevenant? Precisely. Right? There's... There's no current flowing through RTH 
So effectively, the voltage drop across RTH is zero. Okay, so if the voltage drop across RTH is zero, then effectively VOC is also the, the voltage here, right? So that's a nice, that's why I was, I was saying you, you have to use sometimes the open circuit voltage approach anyway, because VOC, the open circuit voltage, is the Thevenin voltage, right? And then another tricky thing is if I have a Norton equivalent circuit, and I look at, so that's Rn, and I connect up a short circuit, to get ISC, what do you think ISC is? Yeah, bingo somebody. Franklin, any thoughts about what ISC might be? Given that it's a, we've connected a short circuit across the output. How about Matt P? Any thoughts, Matt? Isn't it just the Norton um, current <clears throat> IN? Yeah, precisely, right? So in this case, you've got um, you've got the uh, you've got RN. Oops, didn't mean to draw that. You've got RN in parallel with a short circuit, right? So remember the um, uh, the current is going to be it, through this branch is going to be proportional to the resistance in the other branch divided by the sum of the two resistances. And because the resistance in this branch, in the blue branch, is zero, um, that means that uh, ISC, the short circuit current, is equal to the Norton current. Right? So that makes, uh, that lets us figure out if we've already got the Thevenin resistance or the Norton resistance. It lets us figure out what the open, what the, uh, the Thevenin voltage or the Norton current is. Right, so um, let's just go back to see if we can find that circuit. Right, so it's just this circuit here. Right, so we have a, a, a 12 volt circuit. Right, and <clears throat> let me let me do this. I'm just going to take that part of it out. For some reason, it's not letting me go all the way across. There we go. Right, so there's our circuit with the load removed. And what we want to do is we want to measure the open circuit voltage. Right? And because it's open circuit, 
IR5, oh, sorry, IR3 is zero, right? There's no, there's no current flowing out because it's open circuit. So that means here, the voltage here is also VOC, right? Because there's no current flowing through the resistor, there's no voltage drop across the resistor, V equals IR. So uh, you've got to, you, you can move the, effectively you met the, the measurement you're making here is going to be the same as the measurement you make here. And this is just a voltage divider. So in this case, VOC is just going to be six divided by six plus three times Vs, right, which is eight volts. And that's what it said at the bottom in the uh, on the other slide, right? right? That was the equivalent resistance. So that, that you can see down the bottom here that uh, VOC is eight volts. And if we uh, replace or place a short across where the load resistance was, then we can get that, right? And we can probably figure out what that is, maybe. Uh, how do we do that? Well, let, let's just use, um, let's just use uh, parallel resistors and figure out what the total current is and then do I uh, use a current divider to figure out what ISC is okay so um, uh, we have R2 in parallel with R3 right so that's going to be one on one on six plus one on five What's that? So that's uh, five thirtieths and six, so it's eleven thirtieths. So that's going to be thirty on eleven ohms, I think. So the total current. Right? The total current is equal to 12 volts divided by the total resistance, which is 3 plus 30 on 11. Let's just fire up MATLAB and see what that is. Right, so I top equals 12 divided by 3 plus 30 on 11. Right, and just uh, just checking that my 30 on 11 was right. So total current is 2.095 amps. But now we have a, a current divider, so our ISC is equal to the resistance in the other branch, which is 6 ohms, divided by the re total resistance, which is 11 ohms, times I top. Right? Because I total is going to flow here, and some of it's going to go down there and some of it is going to go down there. Right. So that's our I total and fire up MATLAB again and we can get um, ISC equals 6 on 6 plus 5 times uh, what do they call it? I top 
All right, so it's 1.143. Okay, so now we have the um, the seven and voltage. So we know VTH, which is VOC, is eight volts, and IN, in fact, which is ISC is 1.143 and combining those so that should be amps um, combining those our 7 and resistance is VOC on ISC which equals funnily enough the same answer we got before right? Seven, seven ohms. Okay, so that's the open circuit voltage short circuit current approach. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than the other one, but uh, not that much more. Can you just show me where you got the eight volts again? Didn't get a chance to finish writing down. Okay, sure. Um, where did I do it? I did it up here, did I somewhere? Where did I put it? Yeah, here we go. Right, so I I was uh, I took the load resistance away, the one that was on the right, and I looked at the open circuit voltage because there's it's an open circuit on the right hand side of R3. I can just uh, say that the there's no current flowing through R3, so there's no voltage drop across R3. So VOC at the outputs is the same as VOC across R2, or the, the voltage across R2, and the voltage across R2 is just given by the standard voltage divider equations because R3 doesn't signify, it doesn't matter. So it's only R1 and R2 that determine what the voltage is. Okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, so there, the first two Thevenin and Norton equivalent finding values. Here's the third one. This one is the most general. Um, it's not that complicated, but it's the most complicated. Um, but it's it's not too bad. So this one doesn't have any limitations, which is why it's sometimes useful. So just like the other three algorithms, we remove the load um, resistance. And now we replace all the independent supplies with their ideal resistances. So voltage sources get replaced with a short circuit, a wire, and current sources get replaced with um, an open circuit. And then what we do is where the load was connected, we place a, a new independent voltage source, V nu. And we can call that voltage whatever we want. 10 volts, 100 volts, 42 volts, whatever number tickles your fancy, you can choose whatever the voltage is. And then you figure out from the circuit um, what the current being supplied by that new voltage source is. And once you figure that out, then the Thevenin resistance is just the, that new voltage source value divided by the current that it supplies.
Okay, so here's um, the same circuit again, and we, I don't know whether I, I'll, I'll have to write out the equations, right? So here we've got, um, we've replaced the original supply with a short circuit because it was a voltage source. And now we uh, add a, a new supply, and this one I've decided that it's 42 volts because 42 is the answer to life, the universe, and everything, isn't it? Right? And then I'm just going to s solve this circuit using, um, well, let's use mesh analysis by the looks of things. Right? So for mesh one, <clears throat> we have. Um, R2 times I1 minus I2 plus R1 I1 equals zero. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's going to be uh, R2 is six, and so that's going to be uh, nine I1. And R2 is 6, so that's minus 6 I2 equals 0. And then on the other side, we've got um, for mesh 2, we've got uh, minus 42 plus R3. I2 and then plus uh, R2 times I2 minus I1. That equals zero. Or rearranging that, R3 is five and we've got, so we've got 11, so we've got minus six I1 and plus 11 I2 equals 42. And then we can just put that into our RF type equation, right? 9 minus 6, 0, minus 6, 11, 42. And we just apply RF, and that comes out as, I'm hoping it's going to be 1001. And let's see what it, what it gives us for I2. Where's MATLAB gone again? Right, so this is uh, apply a voltage. And this is uh, 9 minus 6, 0, minus 6, 11, 42. Right, and then RF, apply a voltage. Okay, so our I1 is 4 amps and our I2 is 6 amps. So there was a 4 and a 6, so that means I1 equals 4 amps, and I2 equals 6 amps. And remember, I2 is, um, is really ISC, right? Be Sorry, what am I saying? I2 is I nu. Right, so our uh, equivalent resistance is uh, our V nu on I nu, which in this case is 42 on 6, which comes out, funnily enough, to 7 ohms, just like the other two approaches. Gates.
Okay. Now, when you've asked to solve a Thevenin and equivalent circuit or a Norton equivalent circuit, and I usually ask you to solve for both, um, you don't have to, but it makes it much easier for me to see that you understand what you're doing if once you get the answer, you do the following, right? You draw a Thevenin equivalent circuit. Right? Like that. And you say RTH equals 7 ohms and VTH equals 8 volts and you draw a Norton equivalent circuit right where you have your parallel and that's also 7 ohms and you write what you think is the uh, so what, it, what was it, 1.14, is that what it said? I forgot, it's going to be uh, 8 volts on 7. 1.143. Right, and the fact that I just did that is, is, telling, is telling me the following, right? That VTH equals I N R N which is equal to I N R T H which should look very familiar to you because it's Ohm's law. Okay? Okay, um, I'm going to go for broke and I'm going to talk about quickly about maximum power transfer and uh, then we'll have a bit of a break and we'll, when we come back I'll, we might do the uh, tutorial questions. Any questions so far before I uh, talk about maximum power transfer? Is that is what I've just gone through? seem straightforward enough it's a bit of a i i was when i first came across seven and a norton i thought it was amazing um the fact that you can replace something that's really could be really quite complicated with a, a single supply and a single resistor okay so let's uh like i said quickly uh, have a look at maximum power. So this one's interesting. Um, maximum power transfer theorem states, as it, I'm just reading what it says, that the maximum power delivered to a load by a source is attained when the load resistance is equal to the Thevenin resistance of the source. Right? So part of the reason we're looking at Thevenin and Norton equivalents is because of this. And if you remember, I, I, I mentioned the fact that uh, coaxial cable tends to come in one of usually three different impedances, 50 ohms, 75 ohms, and 110 ohms. Well, what this tells you is that if, you, if you, you're a, a, a cable TV company and you want your customers to receive your signal, then 
and you know you've got coaxial cable going into your customer's house, that means your cable box has to have an impedance of 50 ohms, if that's the impedance of the, the, the coaxial cable you're using. If it doesn't, then it's not going to satisfy this maximum power transfer theorem. Right? You want maximum power to be transferred in the case of a, a cable TV box because you want the best TV signal or digital signal possible um, for your customer, right? They, they want to be able to watch television. They want to be able to use their computer network. Um, so this is why this, this particular one is, it's pretty simple idea, right? The fact that you have matching impedances or matching resistances, but uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. And it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, let's see if we can draw it, right? So here's our equivalent. And we've got that um, the, the current I is just equal to the voltage Vs divided by the total resistance, right? Which is RT or RTH plus RL. And then you can write down the, the power, right? It's either P equals, oops, P equals IV, which is equal to I squared R. One thing you'll, if you ever worked for a power company, um, power distribution company, they often talk about I squared R losses because the, the, the power company um, has lots and lots of different voltages going out across their network. It might have 275 kV, it might have 110 kV, it might have 66 kV, it might have lower voltages. But the, uh, the losses um, they can quantify just by looking at the current. They can talk about I squared R losses. Okay, so I squared R, we've got I there. It's just Vs on RT plus RL. We square that and we end up with that equation there, right? So let's just write that out. So it's going to be Vs squared divided by RT squared on RL plus 2RT plus RL. And I wonder whether there's a missing squared there. Or maybe it's that's what the divided is. Oh, no, it's all right. Okay, and um, so the maximum value of the power, if you've, I, I hope you've done a little bit of calculus or you've at least heard that if you have a curve, right, like that, then the peak happens when the the gradient the slope of the curve is zero and the slope of the curve is nothing more than the derivative right that's what this term here is doing the derivative so all this equation is saying is it's taking our our expression for um, well the so what what what's happening here is we want to find the um, uh, we want to find the maximum power 
right? And the power is given by this equation. But the thing we're changing, right, is, is RL. And funnily enough, if you've got a something that you're maximizing, then one on that thing is something that you're minimizing. Right? So this is the trough. And again, that trough, trough happens when the slope is zero. So the, the change from this equation to this one is just saying, well, rather than finding the maximum of this function, I'm going to find the minimum of its denominator. Right? Vs is a constant, it doesn't change. And so I'm just going to find, and the thing I'm varying is the, the load resistance. And if I do that, then the, uh, the derivative of RL with respect to RL is just 1. The derivative of 2RT with respect to RL is just 0, because it doesn't depend on RL. And the derivative of RT squared on RL is, um, as it says there, minus RT squared. RT squared on RL squared. Okay? And then that equation, RT squared on RL squared equals 1, has two solutions. It has a solution where RL is negative, RL is minus RT. That's not really practical. You can build um, negative resistances, but they're not really that useful. And if so, they don't find them in a physical system, in a, a, a natural system. So um, the practical solution, therefore, is that the resistance, the feminine resistance, needs to equal the load resistance. What that means for the cable TV company is when they build their set-top boxes, they have to make sure that the input impedance of their set-top boxes is 50 ohms, if that's the uh, impedance of the... Uh, if that's the impedance of the coaxial cable that they're using. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, um, let's take a break and let's just go back to the, uh, the notes, right? We've talked about superposition, we've talked about Thevenin and Norton, we've talked about maximum power transfer. So that's a lot to get done in the morning. Um, what we'll do is uh, we might... <clears throat> Well, I'll, I'll take a poll when we get back about what you want to do uh, next, the tutorial, the lab, uh, questions or demonstration, and the homework. Professor? Yeah, what's up? Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to... I mean, can I ask you a question about the lab real quick? Go ahead. What's the question? Okay, so um, looking at the two circuits, right, um, do you pick whatever number of resistor you want, like let's say five to six. Now let's have a quick look, okay? Um, so this is lab five, is that right? Yes, um, mesh and nodal analysis. Okay, so let's have a look. Right, so the, the aim of this is that uh, you choose what values of resistors. Yes. Right, and what I think, I think, yeah, it sets the voltage sources, and that should be V2 rather than V5. Um, and yeah, then you uh, you select the what resistor values you use, 
And then you said that mesh 1 and mesh 2 are supposed to be the same numbers. What do you mean mesh 1 and mesh I mean like meaning that you're supposed to get both the values the same because I I heard that you said that last lecture. Right. So so the aim is to solve this circuit once using mesh analysis and once using nodal analysis. And it's the same circuit, so it's the those two solutions should give you the same voltages and currents in both cases. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, the uh, yeah, I think that 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 that's that's what I, I think that's what I was saying last time that uh, the the numbers should match. They they. Depending on um, how you do this numerically, they may differ in you know the the fourth significant figure, um, but they should the first at least two significant figures should be pretty close. Probably the third should be pretty close as well. Sometimes depending on how you work the numerics, the the fourth significant figure might might not be correct, or might not match between the two methods. Okay. I mean, I, I'm happy to, uh, after the break, I'm happy to go th work through this um, with a, an example. Okay. Because I have a, a negative number for BR2. That would be for the mesh 2, I guess. Okay. So well, I was like a little, I was a little concerned about that because I was like, why do I have a negative number? Yeah. That... I did the math wrong, but I'm going to check. You can take the break though and then yeah. you talk after. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work through, I'll put some numbers here and I'll work through, uh, if you want, you can, after the break, um, give me your R1, R2 and R3 and I'll, I'll work the solutions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So let's take a 10 minute break and sounds like we're doing labs when we come back, which is fine by me. Okay, I'll see you on the other side.
Okay, so we should be back. So I had a question just before about the lab. So let's let's just dive straight into that. And I'm just going to grab that. So the aim is to right to analyze it using mesh analysis and analyze it using nodal analysis. Um, and the aim is that uh, they, the two numbers, there's two sets of numbers that you get in both analyses should match, right? It's the same circuit. Physics doesn't change from one analysis method to the other. So it, uh, it should all match. So let's, uh, let's make a new this is, was it, lab five, yeah. So let's do that. do that and let's just go back here and check v1 is 10 and v2 it should be is 12 so let's just write that up here so this is 10 volts and this is 12 volts okay <clears throat> So let's start with mesh analysis. Right, so there's I1. There's I2. And do we want to give some resistance values? Yeah, why not? Um... Are you my my values? Or yeah, just to... your values are fine. Yep, that's okay. I put I put six, eight, and ten. Six, eight, and eight, ten. Eight and ten. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, let's draw the ohm so we can see it. <clears throat> okay, so let's do mesh analysis. So mesh analysis, so uh, I1 equation. I might just make that a bit thicker so I can read it a bit better. Um, we get uh, minus 10, because it's going into the negative side, plus 6I1, because it's going into R1. And just to remind ourselves of the polarities, and then uh, plus, and it's eight times I1 minus I2, because I2 is going in the opposite direction. And then it's plus 12, right, going all the way around the loop. Then we're back at uh, V1 again. So do the loops have to be in that direction, or can they be the other direction? They, they can be... It's completely arbitrary. I, I just usually mechanically go with clockwise loops, but mm -hmm. you can make them go anti-clockwise. You can make them go in, one of them go at clockwise and the other one go anti-clockwise, counterclockwise. It, do, it doesn't matter. All right, thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> that's our I1. Let's just write it out a little bit. So that's uh, 14 I1. Right, minus 8i2, and that's total of plus 2, so it's minus 2 on the other side. And then the i2 loop mesh is uh, minus 12 volts, plus 8 times i2 minus i1. 
right? I2 is going that way and just to remind ourselves about the polarities um, and then it's going to be R3 which is just 10 times I2 and that whole thing equals zero so what do we get out of that? We get a minus 8i1 and then plus 18i2 and then minus 12 goes over the other side. So our RF um, matrix is 14 minus 8 minus 2 minus 8, 18, and 12. Okay, we're going to do an RF on that. And as I said, I'll uh, cheat and go to MATLAB. So this is um, lab 5, question 1, which is 14, minus 8, minus 2, minus 8, 18, 12. And then the RF of that. Ooh, I've got to have a capital L, not a small L. All right, so that means that my, uh, let me just move that over so I can still see it. Uh, I'm going to have to swipe that away and put that there. There we go. Right, so that tells me that I want to draw still. That tells me that my um, I1 and I2 are equal to... Ah, it stopped. I'm going to kill that. And restart it. Start it over there. Let's try that again. Right, so my that gives me that I1 and I2 equal uh, 0 0.3191 and 0 0.8085. And both of those are in amps, and I'm just going to move my uh, decimal point. Oops. I wanted the eraser. Come on, give me the eraser. Give me the eraser. There we go. And I just, no, it's not giving me the eraser. Why isn't it giving me the eraser? There we go. I just want to make my decimal point a little bit further away. Okay, so there's that. Now, um, the thing that you need to do for this lab is a little bit more complicated than just solving that, right? Um, the things we want to know are... Um, so let's draw it in black, right? So the things we want to know are the node voltages. Right, so A, B, and C, and I think they're the only nodes. So the things we want to know out of this are, well, obviously I1 and I2 but we also probably want to know IR1, IR2, and IR3, right? IR1, provided it's defined going from left to right, is going to be the same as I1. And IR3, provided it's defined going down, is the same as I2. 
IR2. Now we've, because of the way we've, I1 and I2 are at cross purposes, one's going down and one's going up, we have to define a particular direction for I, what, we, what we mean by IR2. Right, so and then if we define IR2 as going down, then it's the same direction as I1, so IR2 is going to be I1 minus I2. So that's one set of things we need. The other set of things we need are VA, VB, VC, <clears throat> and similarly VR1. VR2 and VR3. And the aim is that you compare these numbers that you get from this analysis with um, what we got from uh, what we get from nodal analysis. So let's let's just see now that we have some numbers for this one, let's just see what that means. Right, I'm just going to see if I can, I can insert a table. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And, but we've got so 11 rows and we've got nodal and we've got mesh. So let's just, let's just scroll down maybe. And let's insert a table. And we probably want three. There we go. Let's just move it over here. Right, and we've got I1, I2, IR1, IR2, IR3, uh, VA, VB, VC. And I want to see if I can insert a insert rows below. Right, so we've got um, a VR1, VR2, VR2, and VR3. And I think that's all we need. So I gave too many. So let's just delete those rows. Right, so we've already, and I should, probably should put a, um, a column above, a row above. Right, so this is the quantity. And this is what we get from, I could type it, it'd be wonderful. Mesh analysis, and this is what we get from nodal analysis. Right, so I1 was point, um, 0.3191 amps, I2 was point 0.8085 amps. Right, now IR1. I think we said was just the same as I1, so it's 3191 amps. IR2 is a little different. Let's define IR2. And we'll just use green as going in that direction, right? We could define it going in the other direction, but let's just do it that way. So that means IR2 is I1 minus I2. So what's that? I1 minus I2. I1. I1 was 0.319. So that's going to be uh, I1.3191. 3191 minus 0. 8085, right? I'm just typing that into MATLAB. So we get minus 4.4894. So 
So that's IR2 minus 0 0.894 amps. And then IR3 should be the same as I2, so that's 0 0.8085 amps. Okay, so VA, VA should just be equal to uh, 10 volts, I think. We haven't actually done that yet, but I think there's nothing different between nodal an analysis and uh, mesh analysis telling what the voltage at, telling us what the voltage at A is, right? It's It's got a 10 volt supply connected to it from Earth, so it's going to be 10 volts. Similarly for, for node C, it's going to be, uh, VC is going to be 12 volts, right? Because it's just got a 12 volt supply connected to it. The only troubling one is uh, node B. And what's node B? It's probably going to be uh, 12 volts plus R2, I2. Right? 12 volts plus R2, I2. Or we could also think about it as um, uh, I2 times R3. That might be easier. Let's think about it with I2, which is 0 0.8089.85 times 10. So it's 8.8089. Okay, so now it might be possible to, for us to understand why IR2 is negative, right? We, we defined the direction to be this way, but what's actually happening is V2 is at 12 volts, node C is at 12 volts, but node B is only at 8.085 volts. So that means the current's actually flowing the other way, right? The current flows from higher potential to lower potential. Okay, and then uh, the, the voltages across each um, component, right? So we just have to apply Ohm's law. So for six times um, 0.3191, is 1.915 for VR1, so 1.915 volts, and VR2 is uh, I1 minus I2 times R2, so that's going to be uh, minus. Um, 0.4894 times whatever it was, 8 ohms. So minus 3.915. And then VR3 is, uh, well, I think we just figured that out, didn't we? It's going to be the same as VB. So it's going to be 8.8. .8. 8.085 uh, volts. Okay, so we have got a negative voltage there, right? And that's okay because it just means that um, it just means that the current's flowing the other way, right? And it's a rather than the voltage rising from C to B, in fact, the voltage is falling, going from node C to node B. How did you find VB again? I got distracted. Sorry, uh, how to get VB again? Yeah, so all I did is, I, there's two ways to do it. One way would be to, um, uh, look at C plus 
the voltage across R2, but I decided it would just be easier to do um, the voltage across R3, right? Because the voltage at B is the same as the voltage across R3. So VR3 is just 10 times I2, which was uh, 0.8085. So the voltage across R3 is just 8.085 volts. That's why, where I got the VR3. It's the same as VB. Okay. Okay, so that's the, the um, mesh analysis version. Let's go back now and do the nodal analysis and then try to fill in this table again. And let's just see if I can't... Uh, Do that, and let me just see if I can't uh, make the table text a bit bigger. I usually prefer 24, it just makes the reading on the video a little bit easier. Okay, so that's that. Um, let's go down here and grab another copy of the, the circuit and do that one. Okay, and we've got, uh, let's go back to drawing. And let's go with green. What did we have? We had 6, 8 and 10 and 10 and 12 volts. So let's just label those. Right, so that's uh, 10 volts, I think. That's 12 volts. And that's 6 ohms, that's 8 ohms, and that's 10 ohms. And then our nodes, that's at A, that's at B, I think that's the right way around that we did before, A, B, and C, looks good. So then um, nodal analysis, right? So um, at A, we can write down directly, just like we did earlier, that the voltage at A is, is 10 volts. And I'm just going to skip ahead to C. And again, we can write down the uh, voltage at C is just 12 volts. No different from the reasons we wrote it down like that before. Now, the tricky bit is node B, right? Because that's the one where we actually have to apply KCL, right? So KCL at node B, we have IR1, plus IR2, plus IR3, equals zero. And IR1 is VA minus VB on six. IR2 is uh, VC minus VB on eight. And IR3 <coughs> is uh, what's that? zero minus VB on 10. And all of that equals zero. And then we can write in our numbers, write VA is actually 10 volts and VC is actually 12 volts. So then we're just left with uh, one equation in one unknown. It should make life a little bit easier. So let's just rewrite it as uh, 10 on 6 minus uh, let's just say 10 on 6 plus 
12 on 8, right, and then it's going to be minus 1 6th plus 1 8th plus 1 10th VB, or VB equals, what's uh, that, 10 on 6 plus 12 on 8, divided by 1 6 plus 1 8 plus 1 tenth. Okay, let's pull out MATLAB again. Right, so this time VB equals 10 on 6 plus 12 on 8 divided by 1 6 plus 1 8 plus 1 tenth and funnily enough it's 8.085 okay so coming back up here, we can now start filling in. We already knew that those two were the same because we found them the same way. Now we've calculated that one. That one's the same. I wish I could type that it improve things. Okay. So now we can uh, go through and calculate uh, IR1, IR2 and IR3. So let's do that. Right, so um, we have uh, IR1 is 10 minus VB on 6 which is 0.31 right we've got the same value I should have put the units there and then uh, IR2 is 12 minus BB on 8 So, point uh, four eight now. Notice the difference, right? We here we had IR two going down that way. I defined IR two going in the opposite direction. So the number we get now is the same numerical value but the different sign so i'm going to put a minus in brackets just because we defined the direction different but the the that that's the only reason why it's negative versus positive right in the diagram on the screen now ir2 is going up Whereas in the mesh analysis, we defined IR2 going down. So one's going to be the negative of the other. Okay, and then IR3 is just uh, VB on 10, funnily enough. I think I can do that one in my head. Right, VB on 10. And then I1 should be the same as IR1, right? And then IR3 should be the same, well, Again, here I defined IR3 going 
the other way. So, but anyway, the the number is still going to be um, point eight oh eight five amps, and then VR one is depending on which way to define it is going to be um, VA minus VB. Right, so that's going to be uh, 12 minus our 8.085, which should be the same number. VR2, and again, we've got to make sure we get the, the signs right. Um, uh, 8 point... Uh, Okay, so in this case, again, we, we, we've, we've inverted compared with the mesh analysis approach, right? We've got a different, so we have the, the same numerical value, but it's going to be 3.915. And then VR2, again, is just going to be the same as VB. Okay, and that's pretty much the analysis side of the lab. Um, the LT spice side of the lab should uh, add another column here, right? And you should be able to, to write down all the, uh, the measurements that you get in LT spice. And one would hope that they all match again, right? There may be, I, as I said earlier, there may be some slight numerical inaccuracies. You may get things that differ in the, the third or fourth significant figure, but um, they shouldn't differ more than that. Um, in this in this particular example, it, it there's not uh, it's not a particularly complicated circuit, so um, you you shouldn't get things changing too much. Any other questions about lab five? Okay, so while we're on labs, let's go and have a look at lab six. So lab six is a, it's a problematic lab. Um, not that it's difficult, just that it, it tends to confuse people. And it's because it uses superposition. Right, so let's let's have a look at um, let's have a look at superposition. So there are the numbers there, and there's the circuit. Let's grab a screenshot of the circuit. And let's put that into another page here. So these are uh, lab six notes. And we'll insert that picture. And let's just grab the the numbers as well. See if I can paste just the text in. Apparently not. Let's grab a screenshot.
uh, I clicked the wrong thing. I should have clicked picture rather than print out. Okay, so our VS is 10 volts. Our IS is 5 milliamps. R1 is 1200 ohms. R2 is 270 ohms. R3 is 560 ohms. Now, let's um, see what we need to do. We need to measure, let's go back to the, right, first of all we need to figure out the voltage supply only and current supply circuits and we need to have the voltage and current for R1, R2 and R3. So just with like with any other circuit, um, you should define your polarities and your voltages. If you don't, you will get awfully confused in this particular lab. Right, so let I'm gonna define IR1 that way, which means my VR1 is like that. I'm gonna define IR2 that way, which means my VR2 is that way. Maybe that's let's let's not do that. Let's Come on, why doesn't it ever let me select the eraser? Let's, <clears throat> let's not do it that way. Let's do it that way so that the plus sign is there. And then just because that one's going in that direction, I think it's a good idea to select our IR3 going in that direction. Okay, now we need to keep those polarities throughout. So let's let's see what that does. So superposition says that um, for our circuit, I'm going to keep VS first. So I'm going to drop IS, right? So what does that look like? Well, my voltage source is still there. It, it's upside down, but it's still there. It was upside down before. And so my, my new circuit looks like that, where I have my 10 volt supply. I have my 1200 ohm resistor. I have my 560 ohm resistor. And I have my 270 ohm resistor. Right, and my earth is there. Okay, now I've replaced the current source with its ideal, which is an open circuit. And what that means is there is no current flowing through R3. Right, so IR3 in this particular instance, let's call it one, is zero. Because IR3 is zero and Ohm's law still applies, that means VR3 is also zero. And we can, we can give it units as well. So let's just write that down. So part of the, the thing is I need to insert a table again. And we need two, three rows and five columns, I think. Four columns. Right, so we need three rows and four columns. Right, and the, let's just make the font size a bit bigger. And we can make it a bit wider. 
So this is the, uh, the, the quantity, or the type, and then this is R1, R2, and R3, and this is the current, and this is the voltage. And I'm going to, I'm going to call this, this is for circuit one, it's not the total. Right, I don't like using V1. Can I do a subscript? I prefer to do a superscript. Let's do a superscript. So that's V1. So this is the first values for all the voltages and all the currents. And we've already said that IR3 is zero in both cases. Okay, so then it's just a matter of figuring out what um, uh, IR1 and IR2 is, right? If there's no current in R3, that means the same current flows through R1 and R2, right? And the, that current value, right, so the that says IR1 equals IR2 equals 10 volts divided by 1470, right? We've got 12, 270 plus 1200. And let's see what MATLAB says that is. And I might just multiply it by a thousand to so I can see some more significant figures. So that's six point eight oh three. So both of those are the same. Right? Six point eight oh three milliamps. Six point eight oh three milliamps. Let's just check. Yes, they they're both flowing in the same direction, so the, the the they do have the same sign, and just because I prefer having all of our measurements in the same units, I'm going to change the R three value from amps to milliamps. Okay, so there's our um, there's those ones. And then the voltage across R1 is just 1200 times that, right? So I can do that. So it's 8.163 volts. And the voltage across R2 is just 270 times that, which is 1.8 37 and again it's volt, volts okay so there are the for the first um, for the first circuit as part of our superposition analysis so now we need to, to replace VS with its ideal and which is a, a short circuit and keep IS so let's see what that looks like I'm just going to try and draw it down the bottom here without taking it off the top uh, it should be alright without it right so our VS is now a short circuit but all the resistors are still there and now we keep the current source So that's 1200 ohms, that's 560 ohms, that's 270 ohms, and we've got our ground here. Now we want to make sure that we keep the current directions the same, right? So we need to just remind ourselves what directions our currents are flowing. Okay. 
So now, what are we, and what was IS? I've forgotten what IS was, five milliamps. So let's have a look at what that means. Well, five milliamps, let me just turn that off. Crunch. So, um, that means we have five milliamps flowing through, um, let's just copy the whole thing and paste it down there. So I'm just going to delete those values. And now this is I2. Sorry, it's the um, the second version of the voltages and the currents, right? So now we know immediately what IR3 is, right? R3, IR3 has to be 5 milliamps. And that also means we know immediately what VR3 is, right? VR3 has to be 5 milliamps times 560. Let's just grab MATLAB. So 5 milliamps times 560 ohms is 2.8 volts. Okay. And then we've got uh, a bit of calculation to do. We can say that um, IR2 is going to be equal to, in that direction, IR2 is going to, this is a now a, a current divider. IR2 is going to be equal to 1200 divided by 1200 plus 270 times 5 milliamps. Let's just pull up MATLAB again and plug that in. So that's 1200 divided by 1200 plus 270 times 5 milliamps. So it's 4.082 to four significant figures. So that's our <clears throat> IR2 is 4.082, and again it's in milliamps. And again, I this is IR2, so VR2 is just going to be that on a thousand times 270. Right, so it's 1.102 volts. Let me just write down what that was. Was it 4. Point, uh, right, so that there is uh, 4.082 milliamps. And then we've just got to figure out what... Um, IR1 is. Now because this is IR3 is flowing that way and because IR1 is counter flowing the sign of IR1 is going to be negative. Right? And we know that 5 amps is flowing from this branch sorry 5 milliamps is flowing from this branch we know that 4.08 milliamps is flowing out of here. So that means the current flowing this way, where it's actually going the other way, is going to be negative, um, whatever the difference between five milliamps and 4.08 is. Right, so. There's our so it's going to be 5 
minus that, but it's going to be the negative of that, so 0.9184. But because of the sign convention we've chosen, it's going to go in the, and that should be milliamps, going in the opposite direction. <clears throat> and then our voltage is just going to be 1200 times that. Let's try that again with the brackets in the right place. Yeah, there we go. Now, okay, so now let me just uh, get that a little bit bigger. Right, so now we have um, the superposition. You'll notice that, again, because of the directions we've chosen for the currents, um, we have a negative current in R1. And that means the voltage drop across R1 is the negative of the voltage drop across R2, right? Just because of the signs we've, right, we've assumed that VR1 is defined that way and that VR2 is defined that way, right? R1 and R2 are in parallel, so the voltage drop across them is the same. It's just we've defined our voltages counter for R1 versus R2. That's why the, the, the sign of VR1 in the table is negative compared with the sign of VR2, which is positive. The, the values are the same. They are in parallel. The voltage drop across them is the same. It's just you have to measure the voltage drop in the same direction if you want the same sign on the, the values. Okay, so far? Can, can you repeat uh, how to get VR1? How to get VR1. Yep, we can do that. So, um, let me just scroll up and give myself some, myself some more room. Right, so to get VR1, right, that's the, the one in here, VR1. Right, so VR1, is equal to 1200 times IR1, right? And that's just um, IR1, right? Well, let, let's just do the, uh, let's just write the, the KVL, sorry, KCL equation for the node, right? So KCL, and I'm talking about this node here, is going to be uh, IR1 plus IR3 minus IR2 equals zero, right? So, uh, <clears throat> That means that IR1 is equal to IR2 minus IR3, which is our uh, minus 0 0.9184 milliamps. And so I can just plug that in here and I get 1200 times minus 0 0.9184 milliamps. 
and that's by 10 to the minus 3, which should end up being about uh, minus 1.102 volts. Okay, does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I'm not going to do the whole lab for you, um, but that should give you a, an idea of uh, the numbers. The, the next step is to take uh, I superscript 1, V superscript 1, I superscript 2, V superscript 2, and figure out what the real answer is. All right, so that means we need to make an, a third table that has just I and V in each row and the uh, totals will just be the sum of the two tables that we have on the screen now. Right. Um, I would suggest, and the, I think the, the paper, the lab sheet asks you to, I would suggest solving the, um, the circuit uh, without superposition too, to make sure that the numbers you get in I1 plus, so let's, right, so I, I won't fill it out, but let's just, um, no, didn't do it, so, copy, doesn't like me, paste, for some reason it decides to change the, uh, font size even when okay so um, the idea would be that because of superposition now the uh, doesn't like me copying there for, from there for some reason Right, the the final table will be um, those two. The addition of the two currents that we've got in the previous table, and the addition of the two voltages, or the all the voltages we've got in the previous table. So, just as a simple example, funnily enough. No, we don't want superscript there. Why don't we? Funnily enough, the current through um, R three is still five milliamps, right? And funnily enough, that means that the voltage across R3 is also still 2.8 volts. And we're still adding them, right? It's just that the voltage, the current through R3 in the first instance was zero. So the voltage drop across it was zero. Okay, let's leave lab six there, unless there are any other questions. Okay, so let's go back to our list of things to do. Okay, so I've, I've talked about lab six. So are there any uh, outstanding Lab 5 questions? I think we, we talked about Lab 5. So I think we're good with this one, yeah? So... Uh, real quick. Yeah, go for it. What if the signs in LT Spice don't... They don't match with the signs you have on paper? Um, I would try and get them to match. 
right? I, I know it's a little bit painful, um, yeah. but uh, I I would try and get them to match. Just use Control R to rotate the um, uh, to rotate the uh, resistors to to get uh, the current flowing in the way that you've you've done it in the uh, in the uh, in the drawing in the 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 paper version. Okay. All right. I'll try to do that. Okay, you. you're welcome. Um, so let's have a look. Was it homework five? That's um, I forgot. What do we got? Homework five's due today. So let's have a look at uh, homework five. Oops, and I need to push out some of these other ones. Certainly the, uh, yeah, so let's have a look at nodal analysis. Anybody got any Questions about problem one? No? Okay. Problem two? The main issue with this problem is that V2 requires use of a super node and that means that you get a VB minus VC equals V2 equation instead of a, a nodal equation. And then the super node combines nodes B and C so you have to look at current flows through all four resistors in order to do that super node, KCL equation. Again, V2 is, is a super node because um, it's a voltage source that's connected between two non-reference nodes. Um, so you, you, you can't really um, Uh, analyze nodes B and C separately. You've got to combine them into a super node. So you just look at the current through flowing into that super node from R1, R3 and R2. Yet another super node equation. Right, Vs again is connected between nodes A and B. There are only two nodes, so this one is a relatively simple problem. And this one, for some reason I did this one fully. I don't know why I didn't do the other ones. Um, the main tricky thing here is that now we've got a dependent voltage source in V2 and that V2 is two times V out, which is defined as the voltage across R2 there. And then problem six, some people have actually managed to get problem six out. That's okay. You do not have to do problem six because there was at least one example where this was uh, not doing the right thing. Web work was not doing the right thing. So uh, we'll leave. Um, you, you can certainly attempt problem six, but problem six, any attempt at problem six will just be bonus marks over and above 
the 100% for, for this homework. Okay, while I'm here, I'm just going to uh, fix the uh, Thevenin and Norton assignment to make sure that it's not due for a bit. And I might push out the due date to the 3rd of April, right, rather than uh, only giving you a week with it, because I do want to have uh, some time again with Thevenin and Norton um, in the tutorial. We may get to the, the tutorial questions today, but I, I'd like to at least do the reprise next week. So that's now due on the 4th sorry, on the 3rd of April. Let's just make sure that uh, this one agrees. I think that one's due tonight. Yep, Saturday, March 20th at 11.59 p.m. Okay, I didn't get any questions about uh, homework five, so I'm assuming we're all good with that one. So the only thing left to do is tutorial three. And even though it's a little early, I think I might take another 10 minute break and uh, come back and we'll, we'll look at tutorial three. Okay, particularly questions one and two. I'll, I'll just split the class up into two breakout rooms when we come back and uh, we can have a go at, at that question. Okay. Sorry to interrupt, I do have a question. Yep, what's uh, up, Steve? The, the superposition homework question number three. Superposition homework question number three. Okay, let's, uh, I didn't have a look at that, so let's have a look at superposition. Okay. Question number three. Okay, so this is my version of it. So how many subproblems? Well, that's a dependent source, so we, we need to always leave it in. And then there are two independent, sorry, yeah, two independent sources. So that means the number of subproblems is two, right? <clears throat> and then the the question is, um, given those numbers, what is the output voltage in each case? Right. So we would. Uh, First of all, keep the S and replace I1 with its... Do you want me to go through the, the detail? Let me um, let me do that. So this... Oh, you, you, you could do that one after the break. Yep. So okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll do it after the break. Okay. So let me... I'll leave this up on the screen so that when we come back... But let, let's take the break now. And when we come back, I'll do um, the superposition homework at least this, this question out of the superposition homework. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, take that break and uh, I'll see you the other side.
Okay, and we're back. So let's have a look at um, question three. I'm just going to copy it over into OneNote. So let's just do this down here. And this is the uh, superposition homework. And this is Q3. Let's just make that a bit bigger. And I'll just take a screenshot of the, uh, the values as well. Okay. So superposition. Let me just I'm just I just prefer when I do these to write the numbers down. So VS is twenty four volts. Notice it's upside down. I one is fourteen milliamps. R1 is 4 kilo ohms and R2 is 20 kilo ohms. You'll probably get different uh, values for all of these. Um, and then that's 3.4 IX and there's IX there. Okay, so the thing we're after, the thing we need to find is V out. So let's do the two different um, circuits. The first circuit, I'm going to keep VS and remove or at least replace I1 with its uh, ideal, which is an open circuit. All right, so our VS is upside down. Yeah. I wish my drawing were a little better. Right, so there's our I2. And it goes down through R2. And then that's our that's our reference node. And then across here all we've got is R1. And I1 would be there, but because it's a current source and we're re um, replacing it with its ideal, it's just empty. And let's just draw that IX there. And yeah, that's what we've got. All right, so the, the voltage we want to find is here and it's going to be V out one right it's it's not the actual answer it's the answer for sub problem one in our um, uh, superposition analysis so what do we do hmm. well now you've got a choice, right? You can analyze this circuit whichever way you like. I haven't told you which way to do it. So you could do it using nodal analysis, or you could do it using mesh analysis. Either way works. So I wonder what the best way to do it. I don't know. I, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to... Uh, have a look at it, I think, using nodal analysis, right? And the reason I'm doing that is because 
I can see that there's a node here and I have a voltage source here. So I'm going to call this node here, but remember it's actually goes all the way to the ends here. So this is node A and this is node B, but remember it actually goes all the way across and down. Right. And the reason I chose nodal analysis, there's two reasons. One, I can write down VA directly. Right? VA is minus 24 volts. The other reason I chose it is because I need to get V out and V out is VB. Right? It's the, the voltage at node B. So that way I, I can get my answer directly. Okay, so uh, as I said, the uh, VA we know already is minus 24 volts because the plus side of the voltage source is connected to ground and then we, we drop 24 volts, so that takes it down to minus 24 volts. So then, so that's at A. At B, what do we have? Well, we have IS, is it I, I, I2, I2, right? We have I2, let's just write that. I know what the problem is, my tablet's turned around. So I2, right? So that's, whoa, what's happening there? There's I2. There's a current and there's a current, right? So I have, what is that doing? Sorry, my tablet's not behaving the way I expect it to behave. Okay, so I2 um, is one current, and the other current is the current through R1, which is VA, so plus VA minus VB on R1, and R1 is 4 kilo ohms. And then this current here is... 0 minus VB so it's minus VB on R2 which is 20,000 and that equals 0. Now we've got a little bit of a problem in that we need to figure out what I2 is, right? And I2 is 3.4 Ix. Now, I took on, I took IR1 as going into node B, right? So IR1 is the negative of IX. So I2 is uh, the negative minus 3.4 times IR1. And IR1 is VA minus VB on 4,000. Okay, so let's see if we can... Does everybody get that? Right? So I can write that equation down as minus 3.4 times IR1. Remember, IR1 is going that way, so it's uh, VA minus VB on 4,000 plus VA 
minus VB on 4000 and then it's really minus VB on 20,000 equals zero. So this is really minus 2.4 times that and remember that VA we already know is minus 24. So just writing that out again, it's going to be uh, minus 2.4 minus 3.4 plus 1 times minus 24 minus VB on 4,000 minus VB on 20,000 equals 0. <clears throat> and let's see if we can multiply that out, right? So we get a, a minus 2.4 times minus 24 on 4,000. And then it's going to be plus 2.4 VB on 4,000 minus VB on 20,000 equals zero. Taking this over the other side, we get uh, 2.4 on 4,000, 4,000 not 40,000, minus one on 20,000 VB equals uh, I made a sign error. Nobody picked me up on it. Right, that that should come on. Why do you keep not keeps going back. Every time I select it, it goes back. Okay, erase that, maybe. <clears throat> so that should be a minus. And that should be a minus. Okay, and then I get, uh, that's 2.4 minus 2.4 minus 24 so that's positive so when I bring it over here it's negative 2.4 times 24 on 4000 so the VB value I get after all that is well I can now just multiply both sides by minus 1 and then it's going to be 2.4 times 24 on 4,000 divided by 2.4 on 4,000 plus 120,000. Let's see if I can plug that into MATLAB and see what it gives me. No. Okay, so this one is VB of the superposition equals um, 2.4 times 24 on 4,000 divided by 2.4 on 4,000 plus 1 on 20,000. Right, so that ends up being 22.4. One five. OK, 
Okay, I think that's what I got. Let's just check. Ooh, no, I don't. What did I get wrong? I must have done something wrong. Analyze the effect of VS. 20 minus 26. So I got a So that is that's true. So let's think about it. This voltage source is effectively minus 24 volts so i probably should get a negative voltage i didn't get a negative voltage so i did something wrong so let's see what i did wrong what did i do wrong so my currents are I2, which is 3.4 IX. And because I chose my IR1 going in the opposite direction of IS, that means my I2 is minus 3.4 IR1. And IR1 is nothing more than VA minus VB on 4000. No, so it should be minus 3.4 times VA minus VB on 4000. And plus IR1, uh, which is VA minus VB on 4000. And then the current flowing through R2 into the node B is 0 minus VB on 20,000 which is just minus VB on 20,000. So that's okay. So minus 3.4, I2 is minus 3.4, I1, R1. And that looks okay. Aha, I see the problem. Right, so multiplying 2.4 minus 2.4 times minus VB should be a plus 2.4 VB there. Right, and that means that should be a minus. <clears throat> so that should be a minus. Okay, I think everything else is right. So let's just, oops, cross that out. And let's see if I can just change my MATLAB to putting in a, a minus sign there. All right, so that one should be negated. And now that's looking a little better. So that's 20 minus 26.18. That's more like it. Let's just go back. Is that the number we were? Yeah, that's the number we got. Okay, so that's the first part. Let's do the second part. Right, so the second part, this time we need to replace VS with its ideal, which is now a short circuit, and we keep I1. So that circuit looks like this. Right, we just got wire down the left hand side. We keep our dependent source. It's going in the same direction and everything. Right. And then across here we have R1. And it goes all the way to there. 
and then down here we have our I1 going down that way. Okay. And again, that's 4,000 ohms. That's 20,000 ohms. And this one is um, 3.4 IX. And again, IX is going that way. <clears throat> okay, so again, I'll, I'll do the same analysis. I'll use um, nodal analysis and I'll choose the same node names. So that's node A and that's node B. And node A, now that we've replaced VS with its ideal, we just get that VA equals zero volts, right? Because it's connected straight. I didn't write the, I didn't draw the, uh, the ground in, but it's connected straight scroll up and draw it properly All right it's connected straight to the ground okay and then at B what do we get well uh, I'm gonna keep my IR1 definition that way and I'm going to keep my IR2 definition that way. So at B, we get um, IR1 plus I1. Sorry, no, minus I1, right? Because I1 is flowing out of the node. Minus IR2. Right, there's IR2. If I could write it, would be wonderful. And then plus 3.4 IX, and that equals zero. Oh, I don't know what is wrong with my tablet. It just keeps rotating. It means that my uh, writing doesn't, just keeps going the wrong direction. Okay, so, um, IR1 is <clears throat> VA minus VB on 4000, just like it was before. I1 is, um, what did we say I1 was? 14 milliamps. Right, there's I1. IR2 is the direction we've drawn it is just uh i think it is minus 14 milliamps oh you're right you're right thank you i think i've said before the uh the biggest problem in that most people come across including me in this course is getting the signs right you're right so i did write it correctly here but i didn't write it down correctly so it's minus 14 milliamps and then um, IR2 is uh, going down that way. So it's minus VB on 20,000. And then just the same as before, <clears throat> 3.4IX is going to be minus 3.4 IR1. And I didn't leave myself enough room, so, and that equals zero. Now let's move it down a bit. Okay, so what does that mean? We know from the, that that is zero. Right, and now we've still got minus 
2.4, uh, well, it's going to be minus, minus, so it's plus 2.4 VB on 4,000. Right? Minus 14 milliamps. Minus VB on 20,000. And now we can just, uh, so that's 2.4 on 4,000. Minus 1 on 20,000 times VB equals 14 by 10 to the minus 3. So VB equals 14 by 10 to the minus 3 divided by 2.4 on 4,000 minus 1 on 20,000. And that equals, where's my MATLAB gone? Right, so VB super 2 equals 14 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 2.4 on 4,000 minus 1 on 20,000. 25.2. 4, 5 volts okay and hopefully that's what we got before it looks like it is and then the complete solution is just going to be to add those two voltages together to get the overall V out Okay. Oops, I haven't. So there's a superposition one due. Let's just check that I've got that one set up appropriately. Yeah, I think I've got those two round the wrong way. Oh well, let's just see what the number is here, what the date is. That's April 3rd as well. So I think I've got, um, looks like I've got the superposition and the Thevenin and Norton due on April 3rd. So uh, I think that's probably okay, but I need to set up web work correctly at the moment. Um, the superposition homework is due there. So let me just... Uh, Edit superposition. And I'll push that one out by a week as well to the to April third. Okay, so we've got Mesh analysis should have closed. Nodal analysis is about to close. And then because I, I didn't get to superposition and um, Thevenin and Norton until recently, I've pushed both of those out to uh, April um, the 3rd. So please have a look at those. And then after that, it'll be uh, we. I need to cover some more stuff on resistors and capacitors in order to be able to do the next two homework in web work. Okay, I'm tempted to leave it there for today. Does anybody have any questions? Is there is there something else I need to uh, to talk about? I do have one question. Yep, what's up? Rega regarding the midterm exams, whenever we are supposed to meet with you, we just log in into um, Discord and then 
plug it in, into the classroom channel or what should we do? Um, I usually prefer to not have people uh, 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 interrupt. So if you'll notice in, in, uh, in this server, there's also a, a consultations voice channel. And that consultations voice channel is set up so that only two people can be in, in it at one time. So normally for the midterm exam, I, I, get, uh, I get you to uh, log in to the consultations voice channel rather than the classroom voice channel. But other than that, it, it. other than that, it's exactly like today. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? So what we'll do next? Um, yep, go ahead. Sorry. I don't know if it's because you were in it just now, but the superposition problem three has some kind of error. I don't know if anyone else sees it. Oh, really? Can you, uh, let's have a look. I just posted like a screenshot of it on the uh, Discord. That's interesting. Um, thank you for that. Let me just go back there and see uh, if I'm getting that same error. This is on problem three again? Yeah, that's right. Hmm. It looks like it's still okay for me. Let me uh, take that up with illegal division by zero line 27 of the PG file. Okay, I'll, I'll take that offline and see if I can get it fixed. Um, let me know if it resolves itself. Um, but uh, yeah, that I, I, it's still looking fine for me, as you can see on the screen now. But um, I'm wondering sometimes... Sometimes the the numbers, the randomly generated numbers that uh, each student gets um, can be numerically unstable. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen sometimes. And sometimes, it, particularly when there's a division by zero error, like that one's telling me, the, the screenshot you sent, that, that could be that there's a, an issue with the numbers that your particular problem three has been, has, uh, is using. Okay. I'll see if I can get it set up to, uh, to change your numbers. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I tried to like submit an empty response or something to get it to refresh, mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't let me, it just gives me an error, the same thing. Yeah, so. it's really bizarre. Okay, leave it with me. Um, ping me, uh, uh, ping me during the week. Uh, I'll be, probably wait until next yeah, week. Yeah, it doesn't resolve itself. I'll message you. Yeah, please do. Just just on Discord, it's probably the easiest. So I usually okay, respond thanks. there, though. Sometimes I, I get inundated. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If not, let's leave it there for today. And tomorrow... Ah, uh, tomorrow. Next week on Saturday, mm -hmm. we'll... Uh, We'll kick off with just uh, doing the, the four tutorial questions. We'll do the two um, superposition questions, and then we'll do the two Thevenin and Norton questions. Okay. Let's leave it there for today. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, could you just go back up to the, when you just worked out the first part of VB and the superposition? I missed a sign somewhere. I just wanted to screenshot it quick. See where I... Which, which one's this? The, uh... It, the, For the first part when we, uh... Eliminated the current source. Okay, so that's, that's eliminating the current source. What I can do is, um... If I... I'll put this into the, uh... The materials. So you should be able to either access uh, 
the first link there, the really, they're both really long. The one that doesn't start with one note um, should take you to uh, the that particular page on the on a website, right? So you can see what I'm typing in, or rather, what I'm drawing. Eventually, yeah, there we go. Okay. Right, so that that that'll take you straight to everything that I've been drawing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? Well, have a 